Everybody out there with a nutsack is making disintegration or materialization effects, but none of them are gonna do it as good as I am, or are they gonna teach it as fast as I am? So, uh, today, how to materialize anything in Blender, anything with a material and an, uh, here's how you do it. Um, start off with your model. I'm gonna use a monkey, for example, but again, you could have a model that's made out of multiple objects, it already has a material, whatever. I'm just gonna use the plain monkey because I'm too lazy to do anything anything uh, more complicated. I'm just setting up the scene so it looks good. None of this is relevant to disintegration, but I'm just setting up an HD rise so it doesn't look like garbage and that would uh, psychologically influence you into thinking that it looks better than it actually does. Okay, boom, HD rise, it's set up. How do we do the disintegration? So uh, with your object and with your material, I'm just gonna call it uh, Patreon because that's uh, very relevant for this. Um, with whatever object, with whatever material, here's what I want you to do. I want you to add in a layer weight node. Um, this has two outputs. One of them is a Fresnel output, which is, by the way, both of these are gonna be kinda angle dependent. So the way they look depends on which way we're like looking at the model from. It's basically based off the view angle to the camera. Don't worry about it. We have these two outputs. I want you to look at facing, okay? Facing, we can change with this blend mode, right? When it's one, everything is uh, white. When it's zero, everything is black. What's interesting is the way we get from one to the other um, has a bit of visual like flair to it, okay? So this is what we're gonna be using. Take this, connect it to the alpha of whatever whatever you have going on here, as long as it ends with a principled BSDF, or you could just mix it with transparency. Just connect it to the alpha, okay? This will make it so when it's one, it's visible. When it's zero, it is invisible. And in between, it's in between. Um, however, when it's in between, we don't want it to be this kind of ghosting effect. I want it to have very clear boundaries. So I'm just gonna add a bit of contrast. You could do this with a brightness, yeah, a brightness and contrast node, um, like a good little, good little Mormon. No, like a good little boy. Let's go with that. Um, but I recommend color ramp because this gives you much more control over not only the contrast, but where you want it, okay? Um, so now we have going from here to here. Okay, pretty cool. Still doesn't look that great. Uh, what I want uh, to add to this is some kind of energy source, um, some kind of like influence that is making the materialization, right? Uh, to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use emission. So just pick your emission color. It can be red, it can be blue. I do not care. I'm gonna pick red because I feel like red is usually typically what's used for this, okay? Um, cool. I want this, but only with the emission strength kind of on the boundaries of where this is coming in and out of existence. So uh, take this, make a copy. We're going to use the same color ramp, but just do a bit of a manipulation. So the only difference between these two is this one's going to be inverted and, you know, shifted a bit. So one of them is going to be white. The other one's going to be black. And we are going to connect that to the emission strength. Uh, this will make it so that the boundary uh, where it goes from alpha zero to alpha one also has a bit of a transition with the emission. Um, the other thing you want to do, and the reason why I'm using color ramp, is just move these handles a bit over so they go a bit uh, beyond the normal bounds, okay? So let's see what this looks like. Zero, one, perfect. And there's red glowing in between, okay? Fine. Uh, that's kind of like the key elements of our transition, right? Nothing complicated so far, just self and emission. Uh, to make it look cool though, I wanna add in a bit, or actually a lot of detail, because right now we just have these kind of like low resolution splotches that are view angle dependent, but you know, it's kind of lame. So noise texture, this is a great source of randomness. What I want you to do is do use a mix. I feel like I'm a coach coaching you through the game. And in this game, you're gonna fucking put down a mix RGB, use a noise texture, connect it. I'm gonna use a linear light. For a technical reason, but long story short, it adds in randomness without shifting my texture or anything like this. Don't worry about it. Use a linear light, use a noise texture, and the way I want you to think about this is this is our source of randomness being combined with our layer weight. So for the source of randomness, I'm gonna have it have high detail, some roughness. You can see this is just messing up the boundary. So this is before, just clean boundaries, and then after, just adds a bit of a variation. This linear light slider, by the way, is gonna control the strength of this distortion. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having it too high because then it kind of, kind of breaks a bit. But something like this is fine. So, so far, again, we have our main slider, which is this one. It comes in, this time we have some noise, and then when it's one, it's here, okay? A final thing that will make it look very techy, very technology, uh, it, it will look uh, sci-fi. Take Voronoi texture, distance connected to the vector. Why? I don't know, <laughs> uh, but it looks cool. Voronoi basically scatters a bunch of points and does some kind of calculation to create a uh, color map, or I guess a black and white map. We're gonna use that to drive the noise texture 
and for some mathematical reason it looks cool okay um, and the cool thing about this is now you have a lot of options by default it has these kinds of wispy kind of, it has a wispy kind of look to it uh, which is interesting I can increase the uh, size of that just so we have more circles um, and we can also change Voronoi stuff so interestingly enough the way Euclidean is calculated is actually using the normal metric for how to calculate like distances using circles and all this um, but Minkowski gives like stars or something and Chebyshev gives squares uh, basically different versions are going to give different kind of like base elements I find that uh, Manhattan looks the most techy um, but Chebyshev looks cool too. So you can mess around with it, mess with the detail number, uh, mess with all of these things. Uh, but long story short, we have a procedural effect, okay? Uh, main elements are uh, this uh, color ramp that is going to control like the fading. Is it going to be kind of like a nice fade or is it going to be super, super sharp? Um, and you can, you know, control it with both of these color ramps. Is it going to be a super sharp transition? Uh, we have the noise things. We have how much the noise contributes, all this. Um, and then finally, most importantly, I'll add a little value slider for this. We have the blending. Okay, so let's do a bit of a animation just to show you how this works. So I'm going to keyframe zero. I'm going to go 60 frames down. That's when our animation is going to be over. One, hover over it, hit I. That's how you add a keyframe. So we have keyframes here. Let's have it go only 60 frames. And you can see, and this is going to be a bit laggy because it's cycles and all this. By, by the way, yeah, I'm using GPU. A good way to view this, by the way, is use look dev. It's not going to give you the transparency right away, uh, but this will just let you kind of gauge the effect. Um, this is the essence of it. You just animate it like this, um, and then, you know, it appears. And one thing I really want to emphasize, this is a material effect. It works... Uh, Fuck, let me save it, I guess. It works from any viewing angles, the point, and it will look different from different viewing angles, which is interesting. Um, it works with any object, and it works with pre-made things, like if you have a metallic monkey, like a metal shiny monkey, it will just disintegrate or materialize into that. It, it really doesn't matter what material you already have here. You could have like a rough, like, I don't know, a rough blue material or whatever. You, you, you get the point. Um, but yeah, it works with any kind of object. I don't have any complicated ones on hand, but I'll just show you. Here's it with a torus. So it's going to materialize. And I guess the animation is already here. So boom, cool animation. Um, and in this case, it actually looks really cool. It almost looks like there's a lot of structure uh, because of the way the layer weight interacts with this model. Let me just show you with one more so you're convinced. Rock generator, there's a rock, there's a material. Um, well, you don't need UV coordinates, you don't need anything. So there you go. That's my materialization effect. Go harass everybody who made a worse one. Not really, but uh, there you go. Uh, one file, it's going to be available on Patreon. This one, <laughs> you can kind of make it in like uh, 30 seconds, so this one's not too relevant. But any blend I've ever made, any project you've ever seen me work on, any tutorial, whatever, it's accessible through Patreon. Do you want to see tutorials early? Where? Patreon. Do you want exclusive tutorials that are not available? Where? Say it. I want you to, I'm going to brainwash you until it's the only thing you can think about as you're walking through your day. You don't remember who your parents are. Patreon. Okay. Patreon, it exists. There's a link in the description. Check it out if you care. Don't if you don't. But there you go. Materialization. I'm out of here. See ya.